Eat food as grown, as Dr. Hans Diehl says, which brings us around to restaurant food. It's delicious, and as a bachelor, I used to live in restaurants, um, and my blood pressure was up, and I was carrying 10 pounds too much. The reality is that restaurant food is ethnic flavored salt, sugar, and fat. <laughs> when my friends ask me to go out for dinner, I say, hmm, let's see, well, we want, do I want Italian flavored salt, sugar, and fat? Ooh, maybe Chinese salt, sugar, and fat. Ooh, haven't had East Indian salt, sugar, and fat in a while. Ooh, Thai-flavored salt, sugar, and fat's really nice. Huh? <laughs> Restaurant food is full of salt and sugar and fat. That's what makes it taste so good. That's what the chefs are putting in the ingredients uh, <clears throat> back in the kitchen there. And then they serve it to you with seared flesh or overcooked vegetables. <laughs> it's the reality. Does that mean you should never, ever step foot in a restaurant? You're going to have to. There's social uh, pressures, et cetera, to do that. All I can tell you is that don't kid yourself that anything healthy is happening in those kitchens. They're not. And uh, you don't want to eat a whole lot of it. I've gotten my restaurant eating down to very uh, seldom as possible. Less is more when it comes to restaurant meals. And you know what I do before I go out to eat? I eat. And uh, I have a salad and, or a bowl of soup at home, so I'm not famished when I walk into the restaurant. I don't polish off the, half the basket of bread before the waiter gets there. Uh, so eat before you go. And order as healthily as possible. Order the vegetable soup, the steamed greens, uh, eat it, and get the heck out of there as soon as you can. <laughs> OK. <clears throat> so let's get to it in back of everybody's mind. What's, uh, what about olive oil? Oh, no, not olive oil. It's heart healthy. There's a lot of literature back and forth about olive oil. <clears throat> and I'm not going to wait around in this study and that study, but I'm going to tell you some facts that are absolutely indisputable about olive oil. Both animal fats and vegetable oils are fats, and they all have nine calories in every gram. A tablespoon of olive oil has 13 and a half grams of fat, and every tablespoon has 120 calories in every tablespoon. As a result, you're a big olive oil fan. Liquid oils will help do that. Mm -hmm. And very importantly, it'll keep you there. If you are overweight or your friend's overweight and they're trying to lose weight and they are eating olive oil, they are kidding themselves. It's going to keep you stuck. It is liquid fat. Mm -hmm. That I can tell you. So yes, olive oil has some adverse health effects and mostly it contributes to obesity. And studies have been done. They've looked at um, uh, overweight women in Greece. The Greeks, by the way, are the fattest country in Europe. Uh, they have the highest rate of obesity of all the uh, um, uh, European nations. And when they looked at um, the women uh, who are, were obese, and they did fat biopsies and analyzed the actual fat uh, in their fat stores, 55% uh, of the fat came from olive oil. It sticks to you. So. The reality is olive oil is really dense with calories. It is the most calorie dense food we have, uh, 4,000 calories in every pound. Uh, we're trying to get a four to one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Olive oil ratio is 14 to one omega-6 versus omega-3. And we're trying to lower saturated fat. They want no more than 7% saturated fat in our diet. Olive oil is 14% saturated fat. How does pouring 14% saturated fat help you get to your intake of 7%? It's, it's irrational. Pouring, well, um, the take I'm trying to get there is that pouring olive oil on foods does not suddenly make them heart healthy. This salad is not being made heart healthier because this poor person is pouring olive oil on it. These greens are perfectly heart healthy on their own, even more so. The meal this person is about to eat would not be classified as heart healthy. <laughs> if she pours some olive oil on her salad before eating the sandwich, it is still not a heart healthy meal. It is still not a Mediterranean dinner she's having here, even though she poured olive oil on her salad. This is what Mediterranean diet has become. Oh, I've used olive oil on my salad. <clears throat> unhealthy eating is unhealthy eating. This is how your blood looks after you eat rice and beans. You eat an oil, you eat a, a food filled, you eat a meal filled with fats and oils, and this lovely clear blood turns into 
a substance that looks like this. Not everybody shows that this grossly, but this is fat in the bloodstream. This is lipemia. And every time you eat a fatty meal, a wave of fat goes through your bloodstream. As I said, not everybody shows it this densely, but everyone has a wave of fat going through their bloodstream uh, when they eat fatty foods. Remember, your body is never not looking. You can't tell your body, look over here and have a cheeseburger down there. Yeah, what's that? Yeah. Your arteries know, your liver knows, your heart knows. If you are going to be eating a gooey, greasy pizza like that, it's going to turn your blood fatty. Even if you pour olive oil on your salad, before you eat this greasy piece of pizza, it's still going to turn your blood fatty. Your body is not full. It's never not looking. Don't kid yourself about olive oil making things heart healthy. Mmm, spaghetti alfredo um, with a little bit of bacon and egg yolks there uh, to make it really challenging. Um, this is dripping with oil. If you then pour some olive oil on your salad before you eat the Alfredo, do not think this is now a heart healthy meal. It's become a cover for the rationalization of atrociously dangerous eating. Again, your body's never not looking. It's not good to make your blood fatty with any oil after you eat. And as Dr. Esselstyn is trying to tell us, the olive oil and all these refined oils, they're not friendly to your arteries. They make your arteries stiff. And they keep your arteries from dilating and relaxing uh, in response to nitric oxide, which helps keep our uh, tissues healthy by allowing blood to be delivered to them. And this has been documented. Dr. Vogel has given people uh, food with olive oil in it and to study the effects of their arteries. And uh, he looked at the Mediterranean diet on endothelial function. Uh, and he blew a blood pressure cuff. Uh, he gave them some olive oil, blew a blood pressure cuff uh, for a few minutes, deflated it. And instead of the usual increase in blood flow, there was no increase in blood flow. Olive oil paralyzes the blood vessels from the normal dilation. It's not friendly to artery stuff. And, um, and as they said in the study, in terms of their postprandial, that means after eating effect on endothelial function, the beneficial components of the Mediterranean diet and the Leon Heart Study diets appear to be the antioxidant rich foods, including the vegetables, fruits, and their derivatives. <clears throat> Most likely, the heart benefits of the Mediterranean diet are due to it being basically a vegetarian diet. Uh, they're, they're probably getting healthier in spite of the olive oil, not because of it. So don't see olive oil as a health food. Um, it turned, pouring oil on your food is pouring oil on your food. You don't really want to do, there's no reason to do it medically or uh, nutritionally, and it leads you places you don't want to go. So, no, no, he's taking away olive oil too. What, what do we do without olive oil? Well, what do you really use olive oil for? Two things. You stir fry your veggies in it, and you make salad dressing with it. That's about all you really use it for. Well, you can certainly stir fry your vegetables in seasoned vegetable broth. It works just as well uh, with a nonstick pan. No reason that you have to use olive oil. In fact, in fact you don't want to use oil, olive oil. It, it, it breaks down in the skillet. Never heat olive oil if you are going to be using it. Well, what about salad dressings? Well, you can certainly make salad dressing without oil. We do it at our clinic three times a day. You just take a blender, uh, put some uh, fresh vegetables in it, maybe, maybe half an apple, maybe a half a piece of an orange slice, and, uh, and hit the button, and turns into, into salad dressing. Want a little fat in there, they'll throw in a piece of avocado or a couple of walnuts. Uh, it's easy to make salad dressings without olive oil. You don't need the stuff. And then again, the whole world of flavored vinegars, lots of ways to, to make the, the salad dressings taste good. So what's the take home of all of this? Where do we go with all this? Salt, sugar, and oils. <clears throat> Outside of the little bit in whole foods that nature naturally put there, these are not health foods. They are taste treats. Have that firmly in your understanding. And they are too easy to use too much of, and that's the problem. Well, there's salt in the, in the restaurant and packaged foods. Uh, we eat sugar as a food. We're pouring oil uh, over our foods. And the result is the hospitals are filled uh, with people with strokes, heart attacks, colon cancers, etc. So for that reason, more and more nutritionally oriented physicians, dietitians, etc., are saying, you know, 
Americans and people eating a Western diet have clearly shown that moderation does not work. They cannot do it. A little bit turns into a lot. And so for that reason, the policy that a lot of us are coming to is, you know, when it comes to added salt, added sugar, added oils, none is probably the best. Just, just don't use the stuff and throw the oils out. And that you, leaves you at uh, the uh, interesting position of having an SOS-free diet, salt, oil, and sugar-free diet, eating style. Dr. Michael Clapper here, and I want to thank you for visiting my channel and for watching this video. I've got a lot more content that I'm creating to answer health-related questions for you, my viewers. So please uh, subscribe to my channel down here. And if you found this video helpful, please like it and comment on it. Thanks for helping to spread the word about the power of whole food plant-based nutrition to heal both people and the planet.